Please be seated. Proceedings are resumed. Honorable Minister for Finance, I take it that you have concluded your wind up. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. The question is that a bill shortly entitled the Public Management Finance Amendment Bill 2016 be given a second reading. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against no. The ayes have it. The Public Management and Finance Amendment Bill 2016 has been given a second reading. The Foundation Companies Bill 2016. I recognize the Honorable Minister responsible for moving this bill. The Honorable Minister responsible for financial services. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I, I beg to move the second reading of a bill shortly entitled the Foundation Companies Bill 2016. The bill has been duly moved. Does the Honorable Minister wish to speak to the bill? Madam Speaker, thank you very much. I rise to present the bill on behalf of the government. It is a bill which seeks to introduce a very interesting and novel new type of company called a foundation company in the Cayman Islands. The foundation company's bill 2016, Madam Speaker, will introduce this, this type of new type of company or a special type of company that is essentially free of the current uh, perceived drawbacks of a company or a trust in certain circumstances and will offer certain clients and in particular um, trust and estate planners a much more flexible and useful structure with appropriate characteristics from their perspective. Madam Speaker, it is felt that this new structure will be a very valuable addition to the list of legal structures that are currently available in the, the Cayman Islands. Madam Speaker, this this um, foundation company's bill bridges a, a gap between current legal structures so that we have a, a company which may have no shareholders, may entrench its objectives which a company under our existing company's law cannot accomplish. And thus, Madam Speaker, foundation companies will open up a, an interesting range of estate um, and other planning possibilities, which are not, not all, and certainly not limited to the private client field. And, it, and as I said, it avoids these drawbacks and uncertainties um, which apply in relation to the normal type of company and trust, but also very specifically, Madam Speaker, in relation to foundation legislation that um, has been implemented in recent years in other jurisdictions. So effectively, we have we have looked at the rationale and the objectives behind this, this type of, of new, new company and sought to ascertain how effective it has been 
done in other jurisdictions and what particular issues may have um, arisen in their context and, and sought to learn from them, Madam Speaker, sought to improve this, this type of product. So Madam Speaker, the, these, this type of company, um, a foundation company, um, it is anticipated will be used in a very wide range of situations, um, including commercial, uh, philanthropic, and, and other um, private purposes. So, as I said, Madam Speaker, we have sought to create um, a type of company which reflects all of the features which are thought to be desirable and to offer the type of flexibility that would be appropriate in these types of um, applications. And importantly, we, we sought to not unduly restrict the, the uses of foundation companies or to limit the founder's um, ability to grant rights, um, to grant powers and duties as he or she might see fit. Um, of course, Madam Speaker, that is always going to be subject to appropriate provisions which guard against an abuse, guard against um, the use of these types of vehicles for criminal purposes. Madam Speaker, under our existing company's law, a company has to have at least uh, one shareholder, and that shareholder or the shareholders in general are typically empowered to change the memorandum of association by special resolution. And of course, the memorandum sets out the, the objects um, or objectives of a company. So, Madam Speaker, except in a case where the monies of a company have been devoted exclusively to charity, the founding shareholder of a, of a company, an, an ordinary company, um, has absolutely no assurance that when he or she is no longer able to control or is no longer in control of the company, whether that's by reason of, of death or by reason of mental incapacity, that the company will continue to uphold and carry out the desired objectives of the company. In an ordinary company, Madam Speaker, surviving shareholders may change the memorandum of association to take the company in a completely uh, different direction. And of course, that may be totally at odds, Madam Speaker, with the original intention um, or the original plan of the founder. So, Madam Speaker, in that type of scenario in the past when estate planners, for example, or persons who were structuring a vehicle for philanthropic purposes, for example, they might use um, a, a star trust or a special trust alternative regime law trust that we have in the Cayman Islands. Uh, and apply that on the, the shareholders of a company. But that, and, and they can sort of achieve the same objectives with an ordinary company, but that is, is a relatively complex approach, Madam Speaker, and it, it does suffer a number of weaknesses, um, not least of which is that in a number of jurisdictions, trusts are not um, popular, certainly not universally popular, and there are issues with users and advisors from civil law jurisdictions. Uh, another concern, Madam Speaker, is that some, some advisors are, are just not confident at all that 
star trusts would be recognized and, and enforced entirely by, by foreign courts. And the other, another point, Madam Speaker, is that unless you have this um, underlying company with limited liability, the trustees of a star trust, their personal um, liability or personal credit ends up getting committed to the trust transactions and, and, and liabilities. <coughs> Madam Speaker, there are a number of other concerns relevant to that type of structure which could be utilized to achieve those, those uh, objectives. And those are those reasons in total sort of underlying um, a significant part of the rationale for utilizing um, a, and the creation of a new type of, of structure called a <laughs> foundation company. I certainly will hopefully address all of those deficiencies and concerns. Madam Speaker, the, the main distinguishing features of a, a foundation company that the, the provisions of the bill seek um, to uh, implement are firstly that a foundation company has no need to have shareholders. The, secondly, the rights, powers, and duties of a foundation company can be given to whomever the founder wants, not just those who are already members or directors or supervisors as described in the, in the law or the bill. Uh, thirdly, Madam Speaker, the Constitution, which is of course the comprised of the memorandum uh, of association and the articles of association of a foundation company may entrench the objects of the company or other provisions of the Constitution. And fourthly, Madam Speaker, a foundation company may have, in addition to its memorandum and articles of association, may have bylaws which uh, seek to govern the exercise of any discretion um, given within the Constitution by those who have those, those powers or are given those powers under the Constitution. Those bylaws, Madam Speaker, do not have to be filed and they do not affect a third party dealing in good faith with the foundation company. Um, Madam Speaker, the potential benefits to the Cayman Islands of this new type of structure obviously is to provide this new vehicle um, which will hopefully attract business to the Cayman Islands that might otherwise be drawn elsewhere and thus enhance our, our market share and government's revenues. As I indicated previously, Madam Speaker, um, foundation legislation has been implemented in a number of other jurisdictions that are competitors of the Cayman Islands. <clears throat> and therefore, at this point, we have no comparable product and therefore we are seeking to implement this to ensure that we have an additional, um, additional product, an additional service that complements our existing significant um, products and services that have made the Cayman Islands very successful, very strong, very dominant very prominent in the international financial services area. We need to have this product to ensure that we can achieve a rightful market share in this area. Um, Madam Speaker, it could, be, it could also be part of the rationale for a financial institution which decides to use the Cayman Islands, um, use Cayman Islands structures, or indeed even decides to set up 
um, a business operation in the Cayman Islands, all of which, Madam Speaker, is, is positive for the Cayman Islands economy and positive for the potential revenue contributions to, to the Cayman Islands government. Madam Speaker, also, um, the bill also has a provision which requires a qualified person um, to provide services, corporate management services, to the, the, um, this new entity. Um, and they must be, that qualified person must be the secretary of the foundation company and provide the registered office. And of course, a part of the rationale there, Madam Speaker, is that it, it provides a link and a methodology through which there is a separate set of eyes um, who, for things like anti-money laundering and countering the uh, financing of terrorism, are able to assess whether or not there, there are any risks, um, both in terms of the, the parties um, as well as the way the the company may be operated and structured. So, Madam Speaker, overall, this this presents a very uh, an excellent opportunity for Cayman to obtain a competitive advantage in this area because we are seeking to create this new vehicle, um, which is an, a, a more advanced and a, a better form of those that exist elsewhere, having learned from the mistakes elsewhere, and. Certainly, will be attractive to other to other jurisdictions, for example, civil law jurisdictions, where the concept of a foundation is uh, more familiar and more acceptable to both the professional advisors as well as the clients, potential clients. I indicated earlier, Madam Speaker, that our existing company structures don't necessarily. And work well in this type of situation. So this, this type of vehicle certainly um, allows us to reach a different market segment that wouldn't necessarily utilize the, the Cayman Islands uh, for, these, for these purposes. And of course, Madam Speaker, because I said it, it's, we seek to have appropriate flexibility, um, but very firm sort of anti-abuse provisions as well. Madam Speaker, the, the bill is arranged in, in six parts. Um, part one contains the preliminary provisions and is comprised of clauses one to three. Uh, part two, Madam Speaker, deals with becoming a foundation company and contains uh, clauses four and five. Part three, Madam Speaker, deals with the, the constitution of foundation companies and includes clauses six to 11. And on that, Madam Speaker, I would note that there is a schedule to the law as well, which includes a form of memorandum of objects and a memorandum of association and articles of association as well. Part four, Madam Speaker, contains the operation and management of foundation companies, provisions in relating to that, and those are clauses 12 to 17. Part five deals, Madam Speaker, with the functions of the Grand Court and contains clauses 18 to 20, 18 to 21, sorry. Uh, part six, Madam Speaker, deals with miscellaneous provisions um, and those are uh, clauses 22 um, and includes the schedule one and schedule two, which I referred to previously. Madam Speaker, I think broadly that sets out 
the information that I would like to present in relation to this bill. I think it is, as I said, um, an important, adds an important new product as a, a foundation company with the specific characteristics that are relevant to um, estate planning and other private client type business, but certainly, other, oh, certainly also has significant potential in relation to um, other sort of commercial transactions. Um, Madam Speaker, I would like to, to cert certainly thank the members of the Financial Services Legislative Committee who generally assist with identifying opportunities and designing the structures and reviewing the drafting along with obviously the members of the legislative drafting department and the ministry staff. Um, also, Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank all the private sector stakeholders who have been a part of reviewing this bill, certainly all of their tireless efforts in assisting the Cayman Islands to continue to be at the leading edge of new financial services products and services should be recognized. So, Madam Speaker, with that, I would like to commend the Foundation Company's Bill 2016 to the Honourable House for passage. Does any other member wish to speak? The Honourable Member from Northside. To you, Madam Speaker, on the basis of, of some clarity, so I can understand what's being done here. This is a new product being offered in the financial industry. This is not related to the foundation companies such as the questions I asked about HSBC, but can those companies that exist migrate to their status? Because section four, five says the registrar is satisfied the foundation company requirements will be met in relation to the company being formed. Can, can they migrate to this and get the protections under this without public disclosure of those charitable funds that I understand are owned because of financial transactions in Cayman, like special purpose vehicles? And uh, if, if, because when I first saw this, I, I, I guess I incorrectly assumed that this was the financial industry's answer to the questions that I asked about those foundations. <laughs> but because of the, the because of the word foundation and the commonality thereof. The other question I have is that section six says of foundations, companies and, and we prescribe in Schedule One a model constitution. But then section six says a foundation companies constitution may adopt any part of or all of the model forms in Schedule 2 or any other prescribed model form. The question I have is why are we prescribing a form if they don't have to comply with it? Or, or is it simply to, because the memorandums and articles are, are, are part two of that constitution and then it goes on to talk about the bill, about the different ways that the constitution can be altered and the articles and stuff can be altered only in accordance with the constitution. What happens if they leave out the part of the model constitution that allows them to modify the articles? And, and are there any sections in the prescribed schedule two that are must haves is the question I would ask. Or in other words, there are some, some parts of that that you must have, and there are some parts that you have a choice of. Because if they have a complete choice of to do com something completely different, then I don't know why we're prescribing a, a, a schedule. And the other um, question I have is 7.4c, a beneficiary of the foundation company has no powers or rights related to the foundation company, its management or its assets and is not an interested person. Does that mean that if I am a named as a beneficiary, 
I can't ask for accounts and, and whatnot if I get the feeling that the directors and secretaries are consuming the fund through remunerations for their services because it doesn't seem to be in a limit or in a period that you can be a director. Question on how can you remain directors and secretaries until the fund is, not, is, is finished? And whether that negates the purpose of naming beneficiaries and setting up the foundation in the first place if the directors can do those kinds of things. So those few questions, Madam Speaker. Does any other member wish to speak? Does any other member wish to speak? Final call, does any other member wish to speak? If not, I'll call on the Honorable Minister for Financial Services if he wish to exercise his right of reply. Madam Speaker, I'd be grateful if you would give me a minute to consult prior to responding specifically in those, those uh, three questions that were outlined. Would you want to do that or you want to take a lunch and break? That would be even better, Madam Speaker. I could certainly then provide a more, a fuller response on those three questions. Okay, we'll take the lunch and break and reassume at 2 p.m.